Hello, everyone. I'm sure you are just as excited as I am for our amazing guest today, Trent Shelton. Now, you guys have definitely heard of him. And if you haven't, I want you to head over to Instagram right now and go check him as R-E-N-T-S-H-E-L-T-O-N. Now, you might recognize him from the NFL. He used to play for the Seahawks, Washington, the Colts, or on Facebook as he has 11 million followers and just one of the most powerful brands in the personal development space. And also, you might be part of his mastermind as he has a really, really, really phenomenal mastermind where he goes live every single month in his mastermind and he also has a Facebook group and it's a really family like tribe so if you guys aren't part of it yet feel free to go check it out at trendsinnercircle.com and see what everyone is buzzing about online I've seen I've seen posts about it and it seems like a really phenomenal program what what is it exactly for sure um, well thanks for having me on Brent, uh, Brittany I appreciate you for sharing your platform with me and it's a it's a culture community and I I say that so people can identify with it, but like you said, it's really a family. A lot of people, obviously, you know, I can't personally coach everybody who hits me up. And so one of the things that was driving me, what drives me crazy is that a lot of people, of course, you watch the videos, which I believe are good. It's inspiration, but inspiration isn't enough, right? A lot of yeah. us, we want to stick with just being inspired and that's it, that feel good. And that's great and everything, but feel good isn't going to actually create change. And so- yeah it really pushed me to say, you know what, I don't want to leave people motivated. I actually want to help them create the change. Mm. So we spend uh, 90 minutes every month doing that. And actually, you know, I promise that, but I'm always doing extra. And so every day on Facebook, I'm pretty much in the group. Mm. Uh, I'm doing an actual meet and greet for them where I'm doing a live one here in Fort Worth, Texas, where they come down. It's free live training. We actually go hike and things like that. So just creating that family-like culture to really help create change in their lives. And for only $37 a month. Yep, that's it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> for $37 a month, they can join this tribe. That is absolutely amazing. And I hope that all of our listeners really jump on that and check out Trent's Inner Circle dot com for more details or at least check out his book on Audibles. It's called The Greatest You and it is at Target, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, Costco, Amazon, etc. But you got to check it out on Audibles because you are reading it to the audience. And so I love that. Like I'm a big Audibles junkie. I have like $15,000 worth of books on Audibles, like straight nerd power right here. <laughs> and I just love it when the author reads the book. It just feels so much more like connected to them. And it's just, and it shows that, that you really care about people, which is actually um, one of my favorite things about you. I've been following you for years. I remember my little cousin was listening to one of your tracks on um, Apple, and uh, she was dancing to one of your songs. It was the cutest thing ever, but I've been following you for years. And one of the things that I, I really value in you is, is you really care about people. Where yeah. did that come from? Like You have this depth. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a little bit empathic. Yeah. And so you just, you have this like deep connection with people. Like where, where did that start? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I would have to say definitely just from the start of rehab time, obviously. But even looking back, I think I've always had that trait. Um, my mom would tell you, and my dad would tell you that, I'm super introverted and I've always been like that. And it's not from a place of being shy or being scared, but it's just a place of really trying to understand and observe. And so even today, like when I come into a room, like people will think like, oh, Trent's gonna, you know, just overtake the room because you tend to get uh, the more extroverted side of me online, obviously. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really sitting back trying to just be a student of life and trying to really mm -hmm. connect with people on a deeper level. And mm -hmm. when it came to rehab time, you know, the reason why I started this, you know, I never wanted to be a speaker. I, I never was in the personal development just at all. Like I was a hip hop kid. Like my, my mentors were like Lil Wayne and Master P growing up, you know? So like I was a hip hop kid, but as my life started to change, you know, with rehab time, my, you know, one of my best friends committed suicide. And so Ooh. that really made me sit back and think like, wow, like, you know, there's so many people that are going through silent battles. And I know in my life, I was dealing yeah. with those silent battles. And so it was my promise to him to do what I do today. And 
it really was me stepping into fear. It really was me getting outside of my comfort zone. Um, but, you know, to look back, you know, I guess the fast forward 10 years from 2009, um, it was a great decision that I made. And I always tell people like, he's more alive in my life than he's ever been. Because now, because of that situation, you know, millions of people are able to get self-worth and just know that they're enough. Wow, that is powerful. What is rehab time? Yeah, so- For those that don't know about it. For sure. So the word rehab, right? A lot of people hear that word and they think, you know, alcohol, drug addiction. Um, and it can be that for you if it's that for you. But the word rehab, from my mindset, it came from a sports perspective because when you play, and not even just sports, but when you get hurt or injured, you go to rehab. And the rehab process sucks. You know, it just, it's just, it's excruciating. You have to be patient. You know, sometimes you try to come yeah. back quicker and you get hurt again. And so I was like, man, like this is like life. And so my definition of rehab, like I have an acronym, obviously, like we're doing every heart and body. But the, the definition that I always tell people is putting a strength back into a weakness. Oh. And so it's about coming back stronger. So for me getting cut, mm -hmm. we'll probably get into this, me getting cut from the NFL or losing certain things in my life or hitting my rock bottom, it was about me rehabbing that and becoming stronger because of it. So that could be physical, that could be mental, spiritual. I mean, financial, whatever you need it for. It's just about putting that strength back into a weakness and coming back stronger than you were before you got hurt. What happens when you put your strength into weakness? And what happens yeah. when you put your strength into negativity and fear and, and self-destruction? Like, what, what, is that, what is that contrast for you? Yeah, so I think, well, at first, the first step I would say, you have to, I think a lot of times we don't face our reality whatever it is. And that's a big part of rehab. I mean, even in the rehab process, I teach from three points. It's the first point is reality because most people um, are trying to get past something without ever facing it. And the quote that I always use is you'll oh, never win your true. war by running from your battle. And so um, it's about facing it and realizing, okay, this happened. Now, what do I do with my life now? And so it's about admitting that you're hurt, admitting that you're in pain. I had to admit that you know, football was over. I had to admit that I was depressed. And as a man, as a, you know, football guy, you know, it's kind of like, that's like a cardinal sin. You know, you can't yeah. show weaknesses. No. So that was me admitting my weaknesses so I can fix it, right? So I can now, you know, strengthen that. I can now bounce back. I can now level up. I can now do the necessary things, okay. like change my habits, change my circle. But I'll never be able to change anything if I'm in denial in the first place. So that's what that is for me in every area of my life. I'm always trying to figure out, okay, um, even weekly, I'm like, what do I need to strengthen? What do I need to face? What do I need to change? What am I dealing with? And, you know, when you have a, um, a person, and I'm sure you know, know this too, I mean, as you're an influencer, sometimes it gets tough because you're always the person that people are looking to. And so sometimes we always have to figure out, oh, I want to be strong. And I was in that place probably in 2015 where I was projecting all this strength to everybody, but I wasn't working on myself. And I had a breaking yeah. point where I wanted to quit rehab time. Honestly, I wanted to get off the line and do, do all that, just be done with it. And in that moment, I said, you know what? I'm going to be open with my life. I'm going to be open with my struggles, depressions I deal with. I'm going to show them the other side of success too. That's why I talk about that because success is awesome. But success comes with a lot of other stuff too that yeah. isn't always highlighted, you know? And, um, and I know I'm digressing, but... I just, in doing all of that, it just helped me become, as I, my shirt says, protect my peace. And it helped me become just more grounded in rehab time and what I do. So it starts with facing your reality. And then it starts with releasing the things you need to release from your life and then repairing your life, putting the things in your life that need to be there. Wow, that's powerful. And you said that it grounded you. Do you yeah. mean helping other people is what grounded you? Um... Like, do you think, yeah. and I guess the reason why I'm asking this is because, yeah. and one of the reasons why I love following your journey and, and I'm a big supporter of it is because I think people look at my life on social media and they see all the accolades and the success and whatever, whatever, whatever but it's like, they have no idea what I've yeah. been through and, and the anxiety and, and the sadness that I had to overcome to get here. And so I just really appreciate what you stand for because you help dissolve the stigma that goes with that 
and you talk about battling in silence and i think so many people are battling in silence with um with different things in their life like nobody's life is perfect i think that based on social media we so many people feel like they they just can't talk about it and they have to pretend everything's okay and i love that you come out there and you're like no it that sometimes in life things aren't okay just because you're sad right now doesn't mean that you're a depressed person your whole life it means you are going through shit right now and you're going to get through it when you learn how to channel your mindset and and love yourself and so the reason why I ask that is because I've been through so much in my life and I find that what heals me is healing other people yeah. and is that is that kind of like what is what is your motivation where yeah. does this, this passion for helping people come from I think that's definitely a big part of it um you know if not you know the only part of it but it's definitely a big part of it because you know, one, one thing that I love to tell people and it helped myself is like, you know, you'll have somebody say, I don't feel like I'm valuable. I get that all the time. And I say, well, okay, that's a lie you're believing, but let's test that theory. And the simplest thing that a person oh, yes. can do, I say, well, go leave your house right now. Or even, even, even if it's in your house, go give a compliment to somebody. And if they have no reaction to it, then we'll, you know, believe that that theory that you have is true. And obviously yeah. when you go compliment somebody, they light up, right? Or yeah. they, you know, they're, they just change physiology, it changes. And so I said, well, if you had, if you had no value, then you wouldn't be able to give value, you know, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. And so for me, it was seeing that as I'm making these videos, when I first started, those videos were for me. You know, a lot of people don't know mm. that. And I share that in my journey, but those videos were for me. It was my accountability. It was me getting it out because Anything you suppress will turn into depression, I feel like, especially when it's yes. pain. So it was oh, me can you say that again? Yeah, anything you suppress will turn into depression. So I would say suppression mm. leads to depression because we we bottle it in. We bottle it in as, you know, everybody always says, you know, if you bottle something, it's going to eventually explode. And we hold it down. And, and in this era of social media, like you said, I mean, you pointed out where it's so easy to do that because we get so caught up in you know, always showing our best and everybody does it. I mean, even I do it, you know, I'm not going to post the worst picture ever, you know, I'm going to post the best one, but we get caught up in that. And sometimes at least for my life, it was me getting so caught up in the perfection part of it that it became yeah. a prison for me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I always got to get perfection, perfection. And that's, that's a prison that's going to tear your life apart at some point. And so wow. um, to, back to your question though, but yes, healing, Healing, helping other people lets me know this. It lets me know that everything I went through had a greater purpose. Yes. So every, everything I went through had a greater purpose. And I think that's the beautiful thing about life. And you can use that moving forward. Like, okay, this moment sucks, but there's going to be a greater purpose than the pain I'm currently experiencing. And that's mm -hmm. what rehab time in these videos have shown me. Everything I went through had a higher purpose. Oh my gosh, that lands so powerfully on me because I completely feel the exact same. And, and I feel like, I think this is so important as a message for the listeners because no matter what you're going through in life, it's, it's happening to you for a reason. It's yeah. the, this pain is humbling you. This pain is teaching you something. This pain is growing your character and this pain is allowing you depth for humanity. I mean, it, it allows you to, to go through the fire and the battles to be able to help other people. And that's the one thing. And, and I, I know that somebody listening to this needs to hear this message. And if they're going through a hard time, then you're going through that so that you can help other people. You're going through that so that you can grow into a different version of yourself. And sure. so I love the, the, that you touch on that because it's, it's so true. And when you start framing things from that perspective, when you're going through a challenging time, what is this, this pain teaching me? This pain is, is for a purpose and you look for the purpose in the pain, then you yeah. can get through it and you can feel more resilient. And I loved that, that you talked about, um, how, how that prison of perfection, I think that so many people are dealing with that exact same thing. And they're in this prison of perfection and they're not wanting to release something. They're not wanting to, to, to do that, that, that course they wanted to launch, or they're not looking to um, put themselves out there to get new clients because they're scared of rejection and they, they want to be perfect. How does somebody overcome this prison of perfection? 
Yeah, um, you know, I, it's probably multiple ways to overcome it. But just speaking from experience, it's, you know, um, even from a social media standpoint, one of the challenges that I, like I have a love yourself challenge. And it's crazy because in this love yourself challenge, I think it's like day five. Day five is transparency day. And I literally challenge people to go on social media and post something like whether it's just the picture of them, you know, just waking up or, you know, just a raw picture or post something or make a video talking about something that happened in your life that you never shared. And what made me like get to this point, I was in Seattle maybe like, I don't know, five years ago, it was a high school and it was kids battling addiction. And we yeah. did this thing called, if you really knew me. And so we stood, we sat in a circle and we went around and it was, it was life changing. I mean, everybody in there was crying because people were talking about, I mean, you see a 13 year old kid saying, if you really knew me, and they're sharing things like they're battling with addiction at 13, 12 years old, their parents were never there. But I understood like that's freedom when you're able to talk about it and release it to yeah. the world. So the challenge, the challenge is like day five, I literally can see the metrics when it gets to day five, so many people drop off. Like, Ooh. so it's crazy. Like, it's, I mean, you see day six, I'm like, where did everybody go? Because people are so afraid of that. So the thing I would challenge somebody listening is go share something. Of course, when you're ready, by the way, but go share something that, that you've been through um, that maybe nobody knows to, and really get that into the world. Because I think two things happen. For one, you release it, which is great. But for two, you're going to realize you're not alone. Yeah. And you're going to realize that somebody else is going through what you're going through or been through what you're going, went through and needs your story. And that's where you find the power when, your transparency leads to your transformation and your transparency leads to other people's transformation. So just be transparent. That would be my challenge to anybody listening to, to this right now. I love that so much because somebody once said this quote to me and it, it stuck with me for my entire life. And they said, you can't create connection without vulnerability and authenticity. And I was like, what are you talking about? I have tons of relationships in my life that, that weren't created through authenticity and vulnerability. And after that, they said that quote, I actually started auditing my friendships and I started realizing that the most deep, intimate, fulfilling relationships that I had in my life were stemmed from me being authentic and letting down those guards and just letting people see who I was. And so I love that you touch on that because I think the world needs more of that and less of this, this prison of perfection. Yeah. So if you did this exercise, what is it that people would know if they really knew Trent? Yeah, um, I guess that I haven't shared. I mean, I've shared a lot. Uh, but, you know, one thing that, that I uh, maybe haven't shared as much is, you know, I battle... I battle like social anxiety. Like I battle those things. Like it's crazy because I don't know, it's my introverted side, but when I'm around a crowd of people, I get anxiety when I'm around like a room and it's crazy. I have to do this for a living. So it's really me overcoming fear. But even from the point of two battling um, the imposter syndrome, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. You know, so that's mm -hmm. things that I battle is like, man, like, like what? I ask that question a lot, like, what, do, what did I do to deserve this? And do I really deserve this? And I battle from, from the point of, am I doing too much or am I not doing enough? Like, that's my biggest battle right now. It's like, okay, protecting my peace or am I procrastinating? Like, you know, or doing too much where I burn out. So I deal with those things and I battle the same things most, most people battle, whether it be depression at times where sometimes I just feel depressed. And, but yeah. the thing about it now with me is that when these emotions come up, that make me human, I don't stay there, right? Yeah. I have, I call it emergency exits. And so I have my emergency exits, my fire escapes. When I start feeling certain feelings, I go to certain things immediately that changes, changes my state. And whether for me, it's always running, working out in the, in the trails, hiking, mm -hmm. or it's a conversation. It's a person that I know I can always talk to, or for me with my faith, it's, it's a scripture, or maybe it's a, a podcast or something that I listen to. Um, I don't stay there. And that's the message that I want to tell people it's nothing wrong with you because, you know, things are going wrong in your life. Everybody has things that are going wrong. Some people just hide there is better, but yeah. it's a problem when you choose to stay there. Right. Yes. And so you got to have something to get you out of that. And for me, those emergency exits mm -hmm. in my life are life changing when I battle those things. I love that. My emergency exit is rollerblading. I go every yeah. single day. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot skate at all. I'm, I can, I just can't stop. 
So you might have to get yeah. some lessons one day. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's absolutely amazing. And I, I, I get to connect with the water and I get to connect with outside. And I think that's been something that's been paramount for uh, me overcoming my my challenges uh, was rollerblading. And so I love that you talk about that is when these emotions come up that make us human where is our go-to? You you like the gym. Um, I like getting outside. And so I think that's so important. And I think one of the most important things as well, and, and I want to know your opinion on this, is when I get stressed out and when I get kind of in my own head and, and have the same things that, that you just mentioned, I go to this too shall pass. Yeah. And right. so when I'm in that moment of crisis and, and things are, feel like they're, they're weighing down on me, I just always remember that this, there's a bigger purpose for me here on earth to help inspire people, to help heal people, to just help people in general. And that this is, this is going to, this is going to pass and I'm going to feel back to myself and happy and motivated and inspired and all that fun stuff. Um, what is, what is, goes through your mind when you're, when you're battling challenges? Like what yeah. mindset do you have to adapt to be able to pull you out of that? Yeah, well, I understand the power of emotional resilience. And I think that's one of my best oh, that's traits, powerful. you know. Um, and for me, emotional resilience, how I strengthen that, because, I mean, you're exactly right. You have to know in the head, like this too shall pass. You know, no storm lasts forever. And it's something that I have to remind myself of and everybody should like, this is just a moment. This moment doesn't have to become your life. It doesn't have to become your identity. And if you change the definition to it. And so I'm very big on meanings. Like, because if I look back in my life, the, the, me the, the meanings that I gave certain things at that time, like, yes. you know, I, I was like, oh, this sucks. This is terrible. But now those things were the best things that ever happened to me. You know, I mean, even with my, with my son, with my wife, she wasn't my wife at the time, Maria. But, you know, we had Tristan out of wedlock. Like it was Tristan, the pregnancy was not planned. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? You know, but now when I look back, that was the greatest moment of my life. Like yes. Tristan changed my life. And so I'm big on defining things and I give everything an empowering meaning. Even the things that are full of pain, the things that suck, I say, you know what? I can choose what this means. I can choose the definition. So I'm going to define this as something that's going to serve me and grow me and make me better. And that's how I build that emotional resilience because I understand when you keep moving forward, right, your emotions will change, um, especially. Mm -hmm. Also, I understand too that for me, you know, there's no other option. You know, quitting is not an option for me. Throwing in the towel is not an option for me. Nope. And when I make up that mindset that, okay, I'm going to find a way, then you end up finding a way at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. those are just things that run through my head when I'm going through hard times. I love that so much. And I honestly believe that could be one of the most powerful takeaways from this interview is that your perspective is absolutely everything in life. I mean, you can choose to look at that. You have the most amazing family, by the way, like hashtag relationship goals. I watch you guys on Instagram and I'm like, they're Thank so you. adorable. But you get to define your own meaning and you, you don't control what happens to you but you get to control how you see it. You get to control how you process all this external stimulus. And when you stay grounded in who you are and you choose how you're going to allow your mind to see these external circumstances, because everything's external, then you get to give yourself empowering meanings. And the things that are full of pain, you get to, to choose the definition that is going to serve you. And so I absolutely love that. I want to, I want to, dive a little bit deeper on this concept because yeah. I truly believe that it is the salvation for people. I believe it's one of the most important skills to master in life. And that is learning how to control your mindset um, and being able to choose your thoughts. Because when you, it's something that um, I've actually been working on for a decade. And I think that a lot of people use the terminology mindfulness and consciousness and all this stuff. But it's like, when you can really control your thoughts and, and shape how you see things, you, you take the power back. Nothing else and nobody else can affect you because you take the power back where if somebody says something to you, you get to block that off energetically and not allow that to affect you. So how do you control your own mind? How do you control your perspective? Yeah. So one of the things that I love to say that a lot of people 
uh, I guess really, really take to heart is I asked the question, is your perspective, your power, your prison? Oh. And that was a question, that was a question that I had to ask myself. And at one point in my life, it was my prison. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you're, you're in control of, you might not be in control of what happens to you, but you're always in control of how you respond, right? To what happens yes. to you. And so perspective is totally on you. Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, had the mindset of like, uh, you know, you're pretty sure you hear this all, all the time, like easier said than done. Oh, it's easier said than yeah. done and all these things. And I realized that, as you said, I was giving excuses the power to control my life because I was so afraid of the unknown. I was so afraid to walk through fear. I was so afraid to leave my mm. past behind. And then I say, you know what? I got to make this my power. And so one of the things that I do is I literally protect my peace. And so how I do that is how I start my day. I always say how you start your day will influence your day. Mm. Um, when you go out into the world, you can't control what the world gives you. Um, but you can control how you show up to the world. And for most people, when they, how they start their morning really affects their life. Most people, my friend Dean Graziosi says this all the time. He says most people start their life off on defense, right? It means they're responding to the world. They pick up their phone. They're, and he, was, cause he, he knows I'm a sports guy. So he's like, you played offense. And so like, how can you, even though they say defense wins championships, he's like, how can you win if you're always on defense? He's like, you got to be on offense. And so yeah. that stuck with me. So I prepare my day for offense. And so a perfect day for me would be not picking up my phone, would be me literally doing fasted cardio, 30, 45 minutes. If I can go hike, that would be excellent. It's me doing my four A's. And so my four A's are, number one is appreciation. And all these things are good for the brain scientifically. Number one is appreciation. Um, gratitude obviously is incredible. Um, 150,000 people die every day. I don't know if you know that statistic, but it's true. And it's like, when I heard that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have another chance at life, period. Um, you can appreciate yes. your house, whatever. So many things you can appreciate. The second A is affection. I love to say a hug a day keeps depression away. And a hug for the human so body fun. is incredible. Like what it does for you. You know, I'll tell people to go research that. So I will give affection to my daughter, to my wife, uh, to my dog, my, mm. my son, Tristan, he's 10. So he's kind of hard to like hug him all the time. Yeah, he's, like that, he's, like that cool he's going age. through that age. Yeah, he's at the cool age. But, but he's, he's the he's coolest still, parent still, ever, still, so he cool, better so. hug him. Yeah, he'll do it. I just grab him. And then uh, the third A is accomplishment and you know how you start your day will influence your day. So I start my day off with a win. And it can be something that doesn't even do with rehab time. I mean, a winner could be, you know, sometimes it's, you know, washing the dishes, you know, for my wife, you know, so she doesn't have to do what she wakes up. Sometimes it's, you know, um, writing in my journal, like just something to be, have an accomplishment to get my brain started off on the right, in the right way, in the right momentum. And the last thing is um, activity. And activity releases endorphins in your life. Um, it gets, you know, movement influences mood. And so if you want to change your mood, Go create some movement in your life. And so when I start my day off like that, my perspective is empowered. I'm just, I'm open. My energy is high. Um, I'm positive. And, you know, I get this question a lot too, Brittany, and I'm sure you do too. People ask like, how are you, why are you always so happy? I'm mm -hmm. just like, for one, I'm not always happy. But I'm, <laughs> like, too. I'm like, I, what? I wish. Yeah, it's like. We're not we're robots. Humans. We, like, we have human feelings. Yeah. It's like, why are you always, you're so positive. And I just tell people, it's like, that's a choice. Like, what is negativity going to do for my life? Yes. Like, it, I want to have negative moments. I do. But I want to complain. But I know at the end of the day, that is going to do absolutely nothing for my life. So I choose to live in positivity. I choose to have a better mindset to give me the possibility to make my day go even better. Even if it doesn't. At least it gives me the chance to. I love that. Appreciation, affection, accomplishment, and activity. Those are four powerful words. I, I have so many questions for you. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is... Hold on one second. These people are like cutting my grass. Oh, they're super loud. No worries. Let me see if they can pass for a minute. I'll get some actually like to move. No worries. Okay, cool. I think they should be done. Let me see. Sorry about that. No, no worries. I'll I'll edit this part out of the um, podcast. All right, this should be done. 
Sorry, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's totally fine, Trent. I can totally edit this part, so don't even okay, worry cool. about it. Um, but um, okay, I'll re, I'll re ask the question. There are so many things I want to ask you right now. One of them was you touched on imposter syndrome. And yeah. I think it is so important we talk about that because I think that almost every single person in the coaching space deals with this. And just based off um, talking to my friends who, to be very transparent, are, are some of the most successful brands in this space still deal with imposter syndrome. And when they talk about that, and the way that I view that and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is just, it's, it's being confident, but it's also being human and allowing sometimes a couple insecurities to creep up on us. Because like you said, like I'm human and I have human emotion. And I think that it would be so unrealistic to sit here and be like, oh yeah, I don't ever feel ev any insecurities ever. Um, I think that's just unrealistic for, yeah. for humanity. Um, so I think that it's just everyone, everyone has insecurities. Everyone has strength and confidence, but it's, it's, the degree of how much it's like kind of like a throttle. Um, is that, is that kind of what you view imposter syndrome at is what do you, what do you view it at? Cause I know yeah. that every single person I talk to, um, it deals with this. So, so how do we, how do we shed some light on it? Yeah. So the first time I heard it, uh, my friend, Rachel, uh, Rachel Hollis, we were sitting backstage and we we're just talking about life. And she was like, I was telling her like about, just the success like of rehab time and just I was like you know I, I don't and she, she's like you got imposter syndrome and at first I was like imposter I'm not imposter like what is that I don't know what it was I know. So at first I kind of took like a, a thing like what and she was like no just look it up and so I looked it up I was like oh snaps like I definitely feel it's that a real thing and, and I think for me a lot of it comes from and I don't even know this is related to it, but like success guilt in a sense, like, mm. you know, they have survivor's guilt, you know, if you were to survive, but like success and like being the one. And when I use the word success, I'm kind of like talking about in the, in the world's terms of success, right? Like, I feel like we all have our own definitions of what success truly is. Yeah. But like, as far as being successful and succeeding and growing a company and being the speaker and author and all this stuff. And it's like, I've always dealt with that because like, I was always the one, um, and I'm humble by nature, but I was always the one that succeeded, whether it be in sports. I was the friend that got the scholarship. I was the friend that went to the NFL or the yeah. brother. You know, now it's, I'm the friend that, you know, is doing this, you know, rehab time. And it's just like, man, like, why me? And I'll look back and some of my friends, they work harder than me, I feel like. Like my, like my brother, he, pr he probably works harder than me on an everyday basis as far as what he does. And so I think those things creep in. It's like, man, like, do I really work hard enough to deserve this? And I had to erase those questions out my out my mind. I realized like, this is what I was created to do. And I feel like yeah. we talk about purpose and I have my own definition of purpose. We can get into that too in the book. I feel like we are purpose as human beings. But when people ask like, how do I know my purpose? I feel like that's it. Like when you're doing something that seems so when I say effortlessly, I don't mean that you don't work hard at it, but it just comes yeah. naturally to you. And it's like, this is, this is easy. Like it should be harder than this. And I feel like sometimes when it comes to rehab time and what I do, it's just like, I feel like, you know, even being a speaker, like I didn't go to Toastmasters. I didn't go to, <laughs> I, well, I took speech communications, obviously at Baylor, but when I took it, literally I took that class so I wouldn't fell out. Like, and it's funny how things work. And I learned some stuff. But it wasn't like I went into like, oh, okay, I want to be a speaker. And I know there's a lot of speakers out there who put in tremendous work on their gift and their craft. And I put in work, obviously, but it's just like, man, like, I don't probably put in the same amount of work as somebody else that's trying to be a speaker. But yet, you know, I'm able to go speak and do this. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's a conversation that you know, I don't know if there's an answer to. But yeah. I just know, like, I just have to let go of those questions and realize, like, this is my purpose and my calling. And I think that's when you know, when it just comes to you naturally and you can live in that just organically, you know? Oh, I love that. And I love that you shared that because I think that so many people look up to you and, and, and they're like, oh, Trent is perfect. And he's like, got it all together. And I love that you share that because it just, it, it humanizes you and it shows that, you know, you're, you're working on things too. And I think it gives people hope 
that if you're still working on things, then what they're working on is 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 okay as well. It's exactly. it's really breaking this this prison of perfection, being like looking at our idols and being like, oh, like they're they're perfect and they have it all together. And I'm I'm not saying that you don't, but I'm just saying that so many I people don't. <laughs> I know me too. I'm like the first one to always be like, you guys, I do not have it all together. I am just so perfectly imperfect, just doing the best I can with what I have. And I by no means am perfect, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to be a good person, help people along the way and do the right thing. And, and I'm, I'm hoping for the best and it seems to be working. So I'm going to keep doing it. But, but I just love that, that, you know, and, and, and you also talked about like social anxiety. And I think that that's something that's so real for people. Would you mind kind of just sharing your experience yeah. and, and, yeah. and what, what happens for you and then how you overcome that? Yeah. So I get, I get, and I didn't really realize like this, like I've been, I have experienced this a lot in my life. Like I'm the guy, mm -hmm. the best way I can put it is like, I can still, and people will call it a loner, I guess. I saw a quote the other day. I can't remember this person called them. So I was like, that's exactly me. I think they said they're like a, I don't know, I can't remember. There's something loner, like something like where it was, I don't know, I'm going to mess it all up. Anyways, I'm the type of guy that, a person that, I can be in a crowded room, but still feel alone in the room. And that mm. makes any sense. And it's, I know to people who can relate, if they can relate to some people like Trent, that's totally crazy. I don't get it, but that's who I am. And, you know, I think a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. And even today, like today, you know, and I appreciate it. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, you know, rehab time has grew a lot and, you know, I'm not obviously getting stopped like Kanye West or nobody like that or whoever, mm -hmm. like Beyonce, but you know, when I go out, people do recognize and, you know, it's, I don't know, it just feels like sometimes it's tough to deal with at times because you're, it's not, you always have to be on guard, but sometimes I'm with my daughter, I'm with my, my son mm -hmm. and it's never disrespect. It's always love. And it's always like, never on no like celebrity stuff. It's always like, we appreciate, I appreciate you, yeah. but it's just like, um, um, sometimes I get anxious, like when I go out because of that because i'm always worried about like that's the scary part about social media is like yeah people know you that you don't even know that knows you you know what i'm saying it's just it's crazy and even with my son at school i gotta watch you know at times where you know i can't post his elementary school or these certain things that take place so it's a lot of things that have to happen now that i have to be on guard yeah. with and i think it makes me more anxious in certain environments and certain situations but how i deal with anxiety when it pops up is that I always focus on something that I can control. Obviously it's my mm. breathing. They say, you know, going like you do all your senses, you smell or you go touch something. Um, it really helps calm you down. And I do that. And um, it does calm me down. And I, again, I go back to my meanings and definitions. I, I combat those thoughts that I have and release those thoughts and release those lies that might be creeping up in my head and this or that. So it's something I still deal with. Um, that's when, actually, I'm just sharing this for the first time. So it's something I still deal with um, at times, but I'm learning how to get through it. And, and I think too, you know, kind of piggy, like kind of backing up a little bit, you were saying like, you know, um, you know, none, we don't have it all together. And I think with people with platforms is yourself and me and, you know, anybody who's an influencer, I think that's our responsibility now. To yes. like show people this side because I just knew growing up, you know, I couldn't relate to the perfect person. Yeah, it, it almost made it like disempowering for me to be like, oh, I can never be like that. Like I got my own stuff. But if I see a person that's like, hey, I know I look like I have it all together, but this is what I go through, but this is how I deal with it. That's more inspirational to me to see that. Like, it's like if I was at the gym, I don't get inspired by the dude that's like has the perfect body. Nothing wrong with that. Like that's swole and in shape. I get inspired by the person that's like struggling, but continuing to still push through it. Like that inspires me more than somebody actually crushing a workout or crushing a run or crushing anything because it makes it more relatable to me in life. It's like, wow, like that, that's life. We're gonna go through things, we're gonna have hard times, um, but you can still push through and conquer through. And so I think it's just a responsibility and, you, and I'm seeing it a lot more now and I'm happy to see that a lot of influencers are sharing certain things with their audience because you're gonna impact people more by doing that. 
I love that. And I think that the impact is so important. And it's just, it's, it's everything. I feel like that's kind of my purpose and, and my passion is, is that impact. And I love that, that you speak on that. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about your relationship. If we can switch gears for a second. Yeah, sure. How is it? So many people are curious how to build healthy relationships. What do you think the secret is? What do you think the key has been for you to, to build a happy, successful relationship? So uh, first, I think, not in a particular order, but communication is everything, right? But I yeah. say connection is your oxygen. So I believe connection mm -hmm. is a deeper form of communication. And so you have to have, be connected. I think that's the first thing. Um, too many times uh, in relationships, you don't communicate effectively and you're not connected yeah. and assumptions happen and where assumptions happen, you know, they just don't leave an open space. Obviously, you know, things don't go well when assumptions happen. And I think the main thing that I would tell people is with relationships, you have to be selfless. Yeah. If you're in a relationship, and I'm gonna be careful when I say this because there's two sides of this. Obviously, if you're in a place where you're giving, 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 not getting nothing back. That's not a relationship. That's a yeah. one-way street. One sided, yeah. Come to, comes to a <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come to a real halt quickly. Yeah. So you definitely don't need to be in a, in a one-way thing. But you look at relationships, right? You think about it like as a ship, right? And the more things that you bring on that ship, the greater chance it is for it mm. to sink or to move slow. And so I always say when you invite more than the people that need to be on it, two people, and if you have faith, it's God then that's when relationships start to sink. Um, but it has to be selflessness in the way of not what can you do for me, but what can I do for you? And when both people are in that mindset of, I want to, yes. it, 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 it lights me up to make you happy, to make you, you know, to do something for you. And that's in friendships too. When you have that type of relationship or friendship, it's going to be beautiful. But as soon as you get into I'm not getting this. And it might be true, but you're not doing this for me. Even when I get into that as a human, like when my wife, like, man, like, I wish, like, you're not doing this for me. And then I think about, it, wait a minute. Well, what am I not doing for her? And so yeah. instead of harping on that, I go do for her more. And in return, she does for me and vice versa. She feels the same way. So I think when you have that mindset in a relationship, I think it really helps it become stronger and makes it work. I love that. And just to recap, it's healthy communication. It's being selfless. It's putting in that time and effort because we have so many different distractions in, in our life. And it's like, where are you watering the garden? Is it in your time and relationships or is it, is it outside in business or is it outside in like partying or, or maybe you're a producer, maybe it's in music. It's where are you putting that time and effort and really being outward focused. What can I do for you? And I think that's such an important message for our listeners, not just in relationships, but in yeah. life and friendships and in business. Because if there's one thing I learned about creating success in life, any area of life, it's being able to provide more value than you ask for. Right. And okay, I have a little bit of a personal question. Then what do you do if, if you are very selfless and, and yeah. you love taking care of people and um, you love treating people really well and, and, and having that healthy communication, but sometimes you feel like people don't appreciate it. And the reason why I'm asking is because um, that's something I completely agree with you about, but it's like, I think the, the answer, and correct me if it's wrong, it's going back to finding the right people that appreciate you yeah. so that you don't, don't get taken advantage of. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of my content definitely, you know, is about that. It's about being used. It's about, you know, um, not getting what you're putting, putting out. And, and, and even when I say that, like, the thing I tell people, like, scratch, if you scratch, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, vice versa, yes. right? But sometimes a person can't give you what you give them necessarily, right? It just Sometimes it just it won't equal out to that. But if you have somebody trying to put back into your life, so maybe, maybe you're the person that, you know, puts them on in business, right? They might can't do that for you. But maybe yeah. they could go support you. Maybe they could, you know, do something else that helps you. And I think that's what a relationship is all about and the friendship is all about. Because if you give, 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 you're not getting anything in return your cup is going to be empty and yeah. then that's going to lead to some hard times in your life so yeah you want to get around people 
who pour into your life. You yes. want to get around people who want to see you win. You want to get around people who support you. Like, I mean, that's the key to anything in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm never going to be around a person that I feel like doesn't want to see me win because that's an insecurity that. issue. Yeah, that's an insecurity issue. And hopefully, you know, that will change in that person. But I make, at first I make sure I'm the friend that I want to have. And I want people to understand that we can't, ex we can't expect uh, support if we don't give support, right? We can't expect someone to be there for us. We're not there for them. So be the friend that you wish to have. But you got to make sure that your team is strong when it comes to that, that you guys are pouring in each other's cup. And that's what makes a healthy team or a healthy relationship or friendship. I love that. I think that that goes for so much is, is become the person that you want to attract and become the friend that you want to be friend. And I love yeah. that, that, that personal accountability in that. And um, yeah, just be careful of who you surround yourself by. That's something that I think is so important is really doing an audit of who's in your life. Because if, if you are like me, if, if any of the listeners are um, in a similar spot and you, you love to give and you love to take care of people, People, then you have to be very, very cautious of who's in your life so that, like you said, they're also filling your cup up and it's not just a one-way street. So um, I think that's, that's super important and I love that. And wrapping up this powerful interview, um, I want, there's so many more things I want to touch on, but I want to respect your time. I am such a like, I love watching your social media. Um, okay, maybe I have two questions. Um, cool. How does one uh, create a strong sense of self-love? Like, you, yeah. you talk about self-worth, and it's just, I think it's one of the most important aspects to humanity, because if you don't love yourself, and you're not enjoying this process here on earth, and this journey, I mean, it's, it's tragic. Like I see people yeah. that go through life and they just, they don't have that self-worth and they don't love themselves. And it just breaks my heart um, to see them in that pain. How do you, how do you love yourself and why is it important? Yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I can answer this like quickly. Um, Cause it, this could be like a whole two hours. I but, know. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I think, you know, when it comes to loving yourself, it's, it's, it's deep because you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, why don't we love ourselves? And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's because seeds that have been planted in your life. And I talk about this in my book, um, Digging Up the Bad Seeds. And whether that- The that, book that, no, that's a different book than the one that we talked about on the, all No, The Greatest book. You, it's a- How many yeah. books do you have? <laughs> no, so I have, I have well, I've written like four uh, self-published books um, and I'm proud of them, but those were like when I first started. But the, my main- book to the world just released in Maine. That's the greatest you. And I talk about dig, digging up bad seeds in the greatest you because, you know, whether you're a kid, your parents, whether it was a teacher, whether it was a relationship when you were younger. I mean, I remember my high school relationship, like broke my heart, like to the yeah. max, you know, it was, it was crazy. And those seeds still stay there. And so a lot of us, we think that life is about adding things to our life so we're like okay i don't love myself what do i need to get to love myself and nine times out of ten i would say 98 percent that's not the case it's about really probably subtracting things from your life but it's about unbecoming mm -hmm. pulling back the layers to be like okay where does this lack of self-love come from and so you have to go there and then you have to dig up those seeds right you have to face those truths you have to give those things a new meaning in your life and say okay that thing happened but that wasn't real that person was wow. hurt. Most times we don't love ourselves, it's probably because someone who didn't love themselves hurt you, right? Yeah. Most people think the best way to heal their pain is to give pain. It's just hurt mm. people, hurt people, as that quote always says. So, so it true. Starts, it starts there. Um, and then I would you would have to define, you know, if you're a, if you're a faith person, right? It's how you were created. I mean, how God created you, you know, whatever you believe in. For me, with my faith, I realize that how I was created, right? I wasn't a mistake. And so I understand that. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, and people watching this, you're not like, it's 7 billion people in this world. You know, like there's only one of you. So realize how special you are. I always say, if you're looking for a miracle, look in the mirror because you are that miracle. And from there, I would say, you got to define what loving yourself means to you. And so that's what you put in your body. You know, that's what, you know, what you're around. That's what you tolerate. And you have to start working on that. So from a health perspective, 
if you truly love yourself, you'll love your, your health, right? You'll take care of your health. From a relationship respect perspective, if you truly love yourself, you wouldn't tolerate anything that keeps you from loving yourself. You know, from a so business true. perspective, if you love yourself, you wouldn't do things that, that take away from who you are at your core. And so like, there's a whole spectrum of like what loving yourself is all about. And I think it's a holistic thing, but people have to define what that means to them and then grow from there. Mm, wow. That was powerful. Um, and as a, as a big self-love advocate, um, I just, I, I completely agree with you because with my journey, I, I came from being an extremely, extremely insecure person to really understanding how important it is to, to love yourself. And so my journey and my journey is still, um, I think that, uh, it will always be a journey in life as, as nobody's perfect. It's, it's really being able to appreciate myself from a very humble standpoint. Like I found when I was very insecure, I would usually try and overcompensate uh, and, and, and the ego would come out and it, it, I'd say things will come from a place of ego. And now it's like, I don't have anything to prove to anyone because I've proven it to myself. And so I think that's, that's so important is, is going on that journey of self-love because then you get to become somebody that just magnetizes people. Like when you walk into a room and you're confident in who you are and you're grounded and you love yourself, it's like nobody can say anything to really um, kick you off that horse. And so I think it's, it's so important in life and business and relationships. And, and you touch on so many amazing things um, about your health and wellness as well. So, so I love that. Um, so for my last question, how did you grow such a magnetizing brand on social media? I'm, I'm a social yeah. media geek. And so I, I just, I love your content. Do you mind sharing with us how you were able to do that? Yeah. And you're great at what you do, by the way, you know, I definitely, cause I, I see you when you're great at what you do. I might have to pick your brain also. <laughs> but, Let's do um, it. I'm more than happy to help you. For sure. So my social media grew, obviously, like I said, I started in 2009. I started on actually Twitter. Um, I was on YouTube in 2006, but I was just doing random stuff on YouTube. But 2009, I started on Twitter. Uh, when I, it's funny because when I went to the Redskins, um, my Twitter was, I don't remember the exact number, but they actually wrote articles and called me the, D, the Washington, D.C. Twitter king. And I think that really helped because they were so surprised that I had more followers than a lot of the main players. You know, because I was just the guy trying to make the team. They're like, where did this come from? So none of my interviews were about football. <laughs> they were about tw uh, Twitter. It was crazy. I was like, I wish y'all asked me about okay. football. But that grew into Facebook. And so I started on Facebook. And I think one of the genius things that I did, that's really not genius, but I gave my community a name. And I always say, like, turn numbers into a name, right? So it's, hey, rehabbers across the world. And I think so many people are – you know, you want to be a part of something. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. like, you want to be a part of something that makes you feel good. I mean, people will be a part of something negative just to be a part of something. We see it, I mean, all the time. Yeah. And so um, I started my videos, Hey, Rehabs Across the World. And, you know, I told myself, maybe not in these exact words, but I said, you know what? I want to be like a category king when it comes to self-worth. You know, I didn't see many people mm. doing it in a, in a particular way, but I struggled at first. I'm like, man, I don't have like, camera equipment like I don't have the right lighting I don't have none of that so I was like well Grass if people were bringing me in to speak so I was like well here's my phone and I just held up my mm -hmm. phone and made these videos and so if I could break it down I guess to like three things um I always go by the three C's right I always go by content and when I create content one I go to my community people say like how do you find your content and I used to kind of like they used to like trouble me because I'm like I've talked about everything what do I talk about and I was just, I kept trying to find more content to talk about. But then I started going to my community. I said, wait, these are the people that I serve. Let me just talk about what they want me to talk about. And literally they would start telling me things to talk about. And obviously those videos were things people wanted to hear. Yeah. And those videos started to go more viral. Um, so listening to, to my community was a big thing. And even to this point, I let my community name the titles of my videos. Um, because titles are everything, especially in a social media world to get people to stop, obviously. And so my biggest video to date is called Everybody Isn't Your Friend. I think it has like 171 million views on Facebook. And the funny thing about that video is the title that I was going to use was the one that they picked for the least one. And they named it 
everybody's different. They said, Trent, this will make me stop. And so uh, listening to community is very important. Also, I think one of the best things is really engaging with your community, period. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm in my inbox. You know, I have people who yeah. help me now. I have a person who helps me uh, just to manage certain things, but I'm in there. You know, um, every single day I'm talking to people, I'm responding, I'm sending videos back to people because a lot of times when, you, when you're growing a following, people have this thing like, oh, does he really like care about people? And listen, you can't respond to everybody. So that was a thing yeah. I had to deal with too. But I realized, you know, just showing that genuine connection with people will turn them into loyal supporters forever. They're like, yes. oh, this is real. And then they go spread it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things that I want to talk about right now. I was like, I, can't I know. An hour, you know, but like, <laughs> I know. I, I don't have anything to do after. So if, if you okay, know, cool, I mean, right, you're more than welcome to go into it. Yeah, because social. I, I, I love because I don't get to talk about social media much. I have on stages here and there, but I Let's love talking it. about it because even in that, I mean, even the simple things we, that are more popular now, like even telling people like a strong call to action. Like a lot yes. of times, we just leave it open and like, no, tell people what you want them to do. So yes. Literally, this year, I said our goal, hey, rehabbers, our goal, we're at, I think we're at 9 million rehabbers. So let's get to, at that time, I said 10 million. We literally reached that in three months because they felt a part of the process. Or, hey, mm. go tag two people to this video. Go share this video. Yes. And you think people are just going to share it just because they're not. You know, people want to be told, you know, what to do. And they will support you in doing that. And then um, another big thing is just adding conversation to the content. I think you know, people want to be heard. They want to put in their two cents. And so anytime you can ask them like, hey, what do you think? Or what would you do? Or what would you say? Or you have content that makes people want to get engaged in a positive way. Don't do nothing negative. In a positive way, it creates that engagement and it gets people talking and it gets people sharing. So those are just some things, man, that I did. Um, and I think bringing the reality to video has helped me a lot. So you see a lot of my video where I'm actually talking to someone are you know and people feel like they're a part of that like i'm talking to them so that's really helped me in the last two years really grow my brand you know through video for sure so to sum up and this could yeah. be an entire talk <laughs> if you can sum that up like you're that <laughs> in five points that you could literally be like the five most important points to grow your social media number one is building a movement online yeah. and so you talk about like people want to be a part of something and i think this is so important for our listeners to grasp because you have the the power to to build a movement and to be able to build something that people get excited for and i love that trent you are so good at building a movement on social media because most people feel very alone like you talk yeah. about battling in silence and i read your instagram post which by the way you guys if you guys have not followed trent on instagram go follow him right now now at T R E N T S H E L T O N and hit him up in the DMs, take him, like his stuff, show him some love, you guys. You guys, if you found any value from this interview as well, please screenshot it, tag me, tag Trent, and I, I promise to reshare it on my social media. But love that you talk about creating a movement because people want to be part of something so not battling in silence the second thing you talked about was content is creating really high quality content three engagement four tell people what you want them to do like to tag people or to share it with somebody yeah. and number five adding conversation to the content yeah that's so powerful yeah. that is so powerful and then what is your like how much effort do you put into social media i mean yeah. you you are so good at, at building this platform um do you see it as as a movement like what is what is your view on on building your social media because i think that it takes it takes so much time and effort to grow social media and yeah. you just you have such a great way of doing it um, how do you, how do you do it? Like, what is your mindset and, and your process behind that? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's for me, I, I'm trying to think the best way to put this It's literally just putting out value to the world. And I know that might seem the most simple way to say it, but I just feel like that's the thing. I feel like, you know, we could talk about, and there, there are strategies that work. You know, I could definitely say like there's certain strategies that work for sure. But the main thing for me is just, creating value and putting it to the world because I know 
that somebody needs it. And yes. you have to realize the importance of that somebody. That somebody could be the somebody that shares it to, you know, when I went overseas for the first time, what tripped me out was like, how did I get here? There, there was yeah. somebody who saw a video that somebody saw that shared it, that got to, like, it got over here. And I think when you realize that it starts with a person, right? It starts with a share, that creates that ripple effect. And I think, I think a lot of times, and even me sometimes, like, because when you start to get, you know, the numbers get involved, right? And it's, it's like, man, like, okay, this video, I had to check myself because I did a video on Facebook and it had like 10 million views. And I was like, oh, I didn't do wow. that well. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, <laughs> but that's what happens. Like as things grow and that's the, that's the power of like numbers too, that I tell people, you gotta be very cautious with that because you will start to not appreciate things that are, that used to be powerful. See, I remember it was a day where 10 million, yeah, right. I can never get that. But yeah. as it's grew on Facebook and it's like, you know, 20, 30, 40, and then it'd be 15. And now I'm like, oh, we have 10. Okay. That wasn't that impactful. I said, like, wait a minute. That was totally impactful. Like it yeah. reached that many people. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have to think about it like that. And I think when you have that mindset towards social media, when you just create from that authentic space and you come up with your own type of formula, your own type of feel, your own type of brand and just really work it. And that's the thing, like, like nothing's gonna happen overnight, especially with social media now. Like when I started, it was a little bit different. They gave you a little bit more, you know, the, the boogeyman, the algorithm wasn't as strong yeah. back then, but you have to be able to work it and say, you know what, I'm gonna commit to this for the next, you know, five years or next, for me, I said, I'm gonna sign up forever. Like, I'm gonna keep on doing this and not compare your journey with someone else's. Not to say, oh, well, my video only got a thousand likes and, you know, Brittany's got whatever, so I must not be making impact. Nah, your journey is your journey and you have to realize that and just keep growing. And if you stay consistent, if you stay committed um, in doing it, you'll see growth. Like, growth has to happen yeah. by commitment and consistency. It has to. Yes. And so, that's just some things that I feel like have really helped me just being consistently committed over these last 10 years. People don't realize that like the last 10 years in Facebook, I started in 2011 as far as my page and just the last eight years in Facebook, just continuously putting out content, even content that I thought people wouldn't even enjoy. I would still put it out because I realized that somebody is out there to enjoy it. I love that. I love that so much. Um, we're going to have to do a sequel episode to yeah. this all about social media because that's so good putting value out to the world, create from that authentic space and commit to it. You said commitment and consistency. And I think that's one thing that people don't, they don't, they want instant results. Like we live in a world where we have microwave our soups. Um, it's instant. Yeah. It's always instant gratification. We live in this ADD squirrel mentality where it's just there's so much different stimulus and so we want things right away um but what you're saying and, and what you're saying to the the viewers and listeners is you guys have to be consistent with your social media you have to be consistent with adding high quality content and value and you you just you said that so so perfect and you should, and you should let me add this too Brittany. like that's and, and you should love it like I think if you're doing it, you're like, and I, we all get to our point place where it's like, oh, like, you know, dang, you know like, but if you're always saying this is like a, a burden to be on social media to yeah. post your stuff, maybe you really don't want to do what you say you want to do. You know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. like, I love to be able to go live. I love to be able to impact people. Like, it's my life. I love to do it. It's not like a burden to me. So I just want to add in that two cents. You know, if you're feeling burdened to do it, maybe you're doing it for the wrong reason, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I think one way to overcome that, because I think that's something that's that's really real for, for people, is I think one of the things that it's safe to say, correct me if I'm wrong, is you understand every single cell in your body really knows that you were put on this earth to help people. Yeah. And so every single thing that you do, your social media strategy, like showing up for people in a powerful way, all the sacrifices, like, yeah. come on, Trent, like, let's get real. Like how many sacrifices have you made to be able to help people? How much time and effort have you dedicated to this movement when you could be focused on something that is easier or, or possibly more lucrative or something that isn't as challenging or time consuming? Like you, you've put yourself 
in this position to to stand for humanity and be like, no matter what it takes, even if even if crazy stuff happens when you leave the house, and and I feel you, I get a little bit of anxiety as well because yeah. I don't know about you, but I've had some really crazy stalkers in the past, and so. Yeah. I get, I get nervous. Like I've had crazy stuff happen to me, which I'm not going to get into, but, but you still keep putting yourself out there. You still keep showing up powerfully for people. And I think that what's, what, what allows you and drives you to create content, to, to work on changing the world is that you are so committed to your highest level purpose and passion in life, which is to change and heal the world. And so if you're feeling a little bit demotivated, maybe going back and being like, why am I doing this? Why am I creating this content on social media? Why am I creating this status? And, and really getting clarity on, on what your passion and purpose is in life. Man, that's absolutely. I mean, that's perfectly put. Absolutely. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I mean, it comes back, like you said, to the reason and to the why at the end of the day. And sometimes in even just being transparent, like I've had to at points go back to that reason because when you grow obviously you know other things happen now right now it's a business that you have to you know have people have to hire and all these other things that i never thought about when i was starting i was just making videos that happens you know i'm traveling like you said making sacrifices i mean you know i have three kids well two kids one on the way in a few weeks and so so many thank you i'm so so excited for you thank you (laughs) <laughs> so many sacrifices you know i'm coaching my son's football team it's it's but like you said this is like you said i know with every cell in my body yeah that this is what i was created to do and i sometimes have to go back to the reason and to the why and that's why i love being in my inbox also because mm-hmm. my community reminds me of the reason why i started you know they're like mm-hmm. trent you know whether it be I watched the video and I didn't commit suicide. Like that right there hits home with me more than anything because that's the reason why I started was a promise to my friends. So when I get those messages, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm still putting out the content that, you know, came from a place when I first started 10, 11 years ago. So I go back all the time to remind myself anytime I feel disconnected uh, from what I'm doing. I love that. I love that so much. And I think that my audience is a, is a lot of coaches and speakers and they can, they can really resonate with that because it's so, it's so true that like, if you're a coach, like hopefully you're in it for the right reasons. And when you can strengthen that, that passion for helping people and, and be able to really ground yourself in your roots and your purpose and your why, I mean, that is one of the biggest reasons why I think that um, people can wake up in the morning and, and sacrifice so much is because they're so grounded in their why and they're so grounded in why they were put here on earth. And so I invite the listeners that are listening to this, if, if you don't know what, what your passion is, you don't know your purpose, get clarity around that and then keep on reiterating. Like the stories that we tell ourselves are so important because we talked about perspective. Yeah. We choose if we choose our perspective, like me and you, and the reason why I, I brought this up is because I feel the exact way. That's why I've sacrificed so much and dedicate so much and everything is. And so when you choose to have the same perspective that we have, that this is our life purpose, this is our mission, we will do whatever it takes. I mean, this podcast is out there to change the world and, and heal people. And when we really adopt that mentality that we are, are amazing human beings and we love ourselves and we believe in ourselves and we strengthen that confidence in who we have the potential to be and who we are living in this space right now, we can go out there and, and battle these challenges. I mean, we can go out there and, 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 and face these haters because I don't care who you are. If you're Mother Teresa, you're still going to have haters. What's going to keep you going through these battles? What's going to keep you going through, through the emotions of life is, is committing everything to your passion and purpose. Like, do you, do you agree with that? Or is that, is that something um, that kind of happens? That is, that is absolutely a hundred percent. I agree with it. I mean, everything you said, and you know, even with the, that you brought up purpose, um, you know, that's a question that I'm sure you've probably been asked before. I get asked all the time is like, how do I know my purpose? And 
kind of to be brief again. Uh, I hope you're not, you're, are you good? You don't have nowhere to go? I don't have anywhere okay, cool. to go. I was just, I was just trying to be respectful of okay, your no, time. Cool. So if we got time, you just let cool. me know when you need to wrap up. But I feel like we're like just getting the momentum. <laughs> it's like getting so For sure. Good. It's been an amazing interview, but it's like this stuff is like, oh, it's the meat. For sure. Um, so like purpose, I talk about this in my book. Um, and I actually rewrote this chapter because, you know, I had my formula on how to find your purpose. Like I would say, you know, it's tied to your past and, you know, different things. And I believe those things are true. It's a part of it. But then I just had a realization. I'm like, man, like when people say I'm searching for my purpose, and I always think about like, like, where are you searching for that? Right? Like, are you mm -hmm. searching for it in the world or, you know, you're waiting for a person to identify it for you. And I think purpose isn't something that we search for. I believe purpose is who we are. I believe that we were created as purpose. And I think when you start to look at yourself and say, I am purpose, it changes a lot because I thought that football was my purpose. You know, I thought that that was it. And obviously when I lost football, I lost my life. I'm like, I have no more purpose. Some people think it's relationships. Some people think even I'll go out. I even say this, I don't believe rehab time is necessarily my purpose. Right. As far as like what I'm talking about, um, I believe I am purpose. And I think when you realize that, you are that purpose, you can take your life literally anywhere and create impact. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can create impact. Now, mm -hmm. rehab time happens to be the avenue or the placement that my I'm able to use my life most effectively. I really believe that. But if I ever lost rehab time, which I don't think I will, but if I ever lose it, mm -hmm. I can still feel like, okay, my life isn't over. I can now take my life and go do something else and, and be impactful. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with people because I feel like so many people get stuck on that on the purpose thing so much. Like, oh, I need to find my purpose. I need to find it. And I think a lot of times we look for position. We mistake position yeah. for purpose. We mistake profit for purpose. You know, I would ask somebody, okay, if we're talking about purpose. And what if your purpose was to be a bus driver, right? What if your life was to be there and be most effective to help other people, would you still do it? And I know there was a bus drivers in my life, one particular, that literally pretty much changed my childhood because he would come on there and give inspiration to us every single day. Every single day, yeah. I still remember it to this day. And he probably even know how much of an impact he made on my life. So that would be the question that I want to ask people. Like, don't think that it has to be some major position or it has to be some major title or you have to make this amount of money to, yeah. for that to be your purpose. Nah, you are. And then maybe those placements, Maybe those placements come where you are CEO, you are a top Instagram influencer or whatever. That's great. But, but don't think your worth is defined by that, right? You're worthy because of who you are, not because of what you do. Oh, I love that so much. And I think that it's just going to reside with our listeners because I know that so many people think that they're looking to find their purpose. They're looking to yeah. figure out who they were supposed to be who why they are put here on earth and you said it so powerfully is that it's it's uncovering it it's it's already inside you it's deep down yeah. your purpose you're already living you are already a perfect person as you are you don't need to go searching for this thing to change you to to become this this vision of of what you think you are put here to be and i love that it's just like quieting the mind and just listening to um, what's, what's always inside of you and, and having that courage. Cause I think so many people know why they were put here on earth. Um, they want to be a coach. They want to be a speaker. They want to inspire people. They want to do something that's more impactful than the nine to five job clocking in and out that, that doesn't give them fulfillment. And I think that people are, are scared because they're scared of rejection. They're scared of failure. They're scared of, of not being perfect. They have all these different fears and insecurities that, that keep them stuck. How does somebody move through that? Like how does yeah. somebody like get, get to that other side of being like, I want to find my purpose. I don't know what it is. And I, and I have these fears that are, are holding me back. Yeah. Right. So I, I would, um, that's a great question. So a few things come to my mind. One is, understanding what your magnet is and that's the best way i can put it it's a magnet obviously something that attracts right and yeah. i feel like we all have a magnet inside of us and we can call it purpose we can whatever word we want to put on it but i feel like there's something that was already in us since we were born um that doesn't i'm not saying you don't have to work hard in life by the way but i think mm -hmm. i feel like the more you know it and you work hard at it the more it strengthens right but i feel like for me 
when I look back over my life, I've had this, you know, people call it gift or call it, um, I had this since I was younger. And it was always told to me periodically throughout my life. But I was so focused on like my dream, you know, of being a football player so much, which nothing was wrong with that, that I was like, that's not me. You know, I literally, when I was four or five, when I was six, uh, 14, I had people come to me and say like, you're a powerful speaker when I spoke. And I was like, I just paid it no mind because that's not what I wanted to do. So I would tell you to ask people, what is it about you that attracts them, uh, att makes you attractive? Not necessarily in a, in a physical way, but in an internal way. Like, is it your smile? Is it how much you care about people? Is it the way you speak? Is it, you know, the way you solve problems, whatever? Like, and I think you will come, like when I start asking people that, like, what's my magnet? And people would tell me, Trent, you're just real. You're to the point, like you, you put it in a way like where you understand. And I realized, okay, that's my magnet. Mm -hmm. And so I just strengthened that magnet magnet over and over and over again so i would tell them one uh you know find your magnet i'm trying to think of my second point that i had in my head when it yeah. came to purpose i lost it but yeah so magnet is is a big thing for me for sure i love that that's so powerful okay last question because i could literally sit here and bask in your greatness <laughs> for hours <laughs> um do you have haters and if so how do you deal with them yeah, I, we we call them confused supporters. That's the difference. <laughs> okay, we say that one more time. Okay, anyone listening to this, if you want haters, they are no longer haters. They are confused, confused supporters. Because they yeah, are consuming we, we, we your knowledge down, and they are right? giving you your time. We can break it down for that because think about it, okay? And and I just have to realize, because I know it's tough. Like when you go, oh yeah, this my bad. Let me backtrack one second because I got my thought. You asked a question about purpose. I would tell you too to just go like go do, go try. Um yes. I think a lot of times we never like we always wait for the perfect moment or we wait for something to be revealed. We're waiting. No, just go try it. Like go do it. When I first started speaking, like in my first speech, I literally froze up in front of five now, Yeah. I, I forgot everything. Like literally that's why now I feel like I speak from a place of like just like it it almost I prepare, I don't want to get it twisted, but like the more I prepare, the more it gives me anxiety because of that. Because like mm -hmm. I literally prepared the whole night before and I'm like, dang, what was that first point? And I was like, oh, and I was like, well, I just gotta go. I'm up here now. And so that, and be afraid, go fail, yeah. go be embarrassed, you know, go have your mess ups because yeah. that those things are going to be the foundation for your growth. When I first started, literally my events that I was doing, I call them live conversation. There was like 10 people that would show up, five people. Wow. But I loved it because I was like, I'm in Las Vegas and there's 10 people who care about rehab. So this is awesome. And so I loved it in the grand scheme of things though. That wasn't a big audience, but I wasn't afraid to, to be embarrassed in the, in, in the try. So I would mm -hmm. tell you that because nothing's ever going to happen by sitting there waiting for the perfect mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, okay, so back to haters. Um, and the reason I say confused supporters is because you got to think about this. For one, I forgot how the quote is, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, like, if you don't want to be hated, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. And it's so true. Mm, um, that's so powerful. Yeah, it's a quote. I don't know whose quote it is, and I probably paraphrased it wrong, but it's out there. Like, I think it's a... It's a, some great philosopher. I forgot. I don't know who it was, but uh, I hope it is. It might be like Jake or something. <laughs> but it's, I believe it's like somebody, but if, like you say, yeah, if you don't want to be criticized or hated on, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. And it's true because you have to realize this with haters. Change your mindset towards it. For one, anybody who hates on another person is not happy. Yes. Facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. so when you understand that, Facts. you can immediately make it less about you not about you at all and it's more about them right it's not a personal thing if they were happy i'm pretty sure they wouldn't be hating on you no two if somebody follows you because i know social media is a thing if somebody follows you on social media right they make up fake profiles they know everything about your life that's not a hater right that's somebody who admires you they just have pride and jealousy and ego to admit it because if you truly hate something think about things that you hate if you hate a certain food, you don't pay it any attention. If you hate a TV show, you don't watch it. You know, it's like yeah. you don't pay it any mind. So it's really, as Drake said, right? Jealousy is love and hate at the same time. 
And I'm actually coming out with a video very soon. I just recorded in New York that really addresses this. And I say, you know, when you start becoming the person that other people want to become, but they're not putting in the work to become it, they'll start to hate on what you became. It just, wow. it just, it just, it happens like that. So they're really confused supporters. So change your mindset towards it. All right, it's going to happen. Okay, so don't let it get to you. So that, and that's, I don't really deal with it. Honestly, I don't give them, I don't use my energy to, to fight back with them. If I do say something, I give them the response that they don't want, like by a smiley mm -hmm. face or say, I appreciate you. Thank you for your I support. And it's true because those people need help also. They need help. And so when you get in your inbox and you respond to a hater, a lot of times what I get at least is like, oh, I didn't think you would respond. My bad. I was just, I was, I was, I was playing around. And I was just like, what's up? What's going on with your life? And <laughs> I've oh, been able to help so many people yeah. that were haters turn into like literally rehabbers, like oh. just by in my inbox. So that's what I feel about haters. They're nothing but confused supporters. That gave me goosebumps when you said that latest part is, is you were able to help them. And I totally agree with you. Like, uh, do we see happy, successful people hating? Like, let's, let's think about who are the biggest people in this space. By the way, I don't know if you remember, but I, you spoke at Brendan Bouchard's event. Yep, I did. I know Brendan real well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's when we first connected. Yep. Um, but let's let's say Brendan Bouchard. Do you see him hating on people? No. Nope. Let, Tony Robbins. Do you nope. see him, <laughs> D Trent Shelton? Do you see him at, like Robin Sharma? Like you think of Deepak Chopra? You think of like people that pioneered this space? Do you think that they have the time, the energy, and the bandwidth in their mind like think of all the stuff that we have to do in a day-to-day -day basis do you think that successful people have the bandwidth in their mind to take on the responsibility of co-creating that negative energy absolutely not you see the haters they're usually miserable have barely employed jealousy unhappy ego like you also have to remember the source that it's coming from and and that's why you need to show people love you need to specifically show these people love because if they were happy if they were successful they wouldn't be feeling the need to tear you down and so be kind to these people don't don't retaliate don't you know try try and, and and bash them even more because a lot like some of these people are suicidal and they're just they're just acting out their anger they have deep, deep wounds inside of them and they're literally just they're just projecting their anger out into the universe and you just happen to be the sounding board that, that got that that emotional abuse and pain so so have kindness towards these people. Send them to Trent's mastermind. <laughs> give them anyone hates on you, okay? We're going to give them to rehab. Trent'sInnerCircle.com. So for now on, if you get any negative comments, copy and paste www.trent'sInnerCircle.com. Let's rehab them. Yeah, there we Let's go. Let's help these people out. Give them your book as well, The Greatest You. Download on Audible's. And, and just show these people love. Just just remember to to have kindness and, and you don't know the battles they're facing. So on that note, let's conclude. And then I would love if you're interested to do another one, um, maybe deep dive into social media. Yeah. I think that would be so amazing. Um, but thank you so much, Trent, for your time. I am just so honored to bring you on. I was so excited for this interview. <laughs> All my friends know, because I was like, I'm so excited to interview Trent. Because you just, there's, there's so many amazing things that, that you're doing and you're just such a prime example of what happens when you, when you step into your power and you, you do not allow fear to hold you back and you focus on believing in yourself. I mean, I think that that's one thing that, that people really get from you is this very, um, humility like this very humble vibe because you are so confident in who you are and and you love yourself and and you're comfortable yeah with who you are like you can look in the mirror and be like yeah okay i'm not perfect but i'm so comfortable with who i am because i know i'm a good person i know that i i take one foot forward step every single day and i'm just I'm, I'm just showing up on this planet i'm just i'm, I'm trying to be me and i i hope a takeaway from that is 
um, to live with a clean conscience because when you are out there and you're doing good in the world, it's way easier to be, to be comfortable with who you are in the mirror. And um, that's just so inspiring. That's so inspiring what you've created and just how authentic you are in a world where people are scared to be authentic yeah. and let down their guards and you just... You're, you're just doing amazing things. So, so thank you so much, Trent, for your time. I'm, I'm obviously a big supporter and I'm excited to see where you go. I think that you just, you, you have so much momentum behind you and you have the world of supporters and I'm just, I'm excited to see how you impact the world even more in future. And, and thank you for your commitment to humanity. Well, thanks, Brittany. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for all of that. And, you know, I've, we've crossed path of, paths a lot. Um, just, at these events and you know you're a person too just to shed some light on you that I always see you um adding value to people that's one thing that i see from you adding value to people connecting people and just showing up so and making a positive impact in the world so keep doing that i'm glad we connected and um let's just make the world respect our greatness <laughs> I love that. I love that. So guys, anyone listening to this, go out there and, and live an amazing life. And I, I put a quote on my Instagram a couple of days ago and it was like, the greatest revenge to your pain and sadness and misery is, is a life of happiness and success. And so, you know, go out there and, and thank you for your time listening to this podcast. You've invested time in yourself and um, that's really amazing. So go add Trent on Instagram, check out his is mastermind trends inner circle.com for less than $40 a month. They can join this and join this tribe. You guys, you guys will not regret it. And uh, check out his book, the greatest you a target Barnes and Noble, uh, Walmart, Costco, Amazon, and specifically on audibles, my favorite platform. So thank you so much, Trent, for your time. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.